This video is sponsored by Visible. Hi, baby. Hi, uh, yes, how are you? Morning, another day, another rear wheel test. Today, we're doing it on the OnePlus 9 Pro. And if you're not familiar uh, with these real world tests, I'm gonna use this phone as my normal phone throughout the day. We're gonna take photos on it and some of its competitors. I'll put those up on the screen so you guys can check those out and we'll check in on the battery throughout the day and see how that's doing, along with talking about some of the features that I like and don't like about the phone. But, first things first. Drop the pie. Coffee. Check. Also, pie. Because why not? Pie for breakfast. Into it. And that pie, which I can confirm is delicious, is from our first stop on this tour here in Red Hook, Brooklyn. And that's Steve's Authentic Key Lime Pies. And I actually just met Steve, um, and he's a lovely man. And he was explaining to me um, how they've been in business for over 25 years now, and they're one of only two commercial bakeries in the U.S. that squeeze their own key limes, neither of which are in the Florida Keys, where key limes come from. Go figure. Also, his wife apparently makes the cold brew, Victoria. Good job, Victoria. Okay, and while we're here, let's quickly talk about the design of this phone. Now, the OnePlus 9 Pro comes in three colors. We have the Morning Mist, which is kind of like a silver color, but it has a glossy back, which is very fingerprinty. Then we have Pine Green, which is obviously a green, but it's actually a little less glossy. And then we have Stellar Black, which is actually like a matte finish. So, personally, between those three, I would choose one of the other two, not this one, although it is a nice color, but I want the mat back, but maybe that's just me. Now we also have, as we always do, our OnePlus uh, notification slider, obviously very um, similar to the iPhone's one. Mm, not a coincidence, but uh, I do like it. I like it on here. I think it's uh, a nice tactile way to be able to switch from uh, vibrate to totally silent and also to ring. I usually leave it on vibrate most of the time, but every now and then if I want to do do not disturb, I just done. I actually like the camera bump on the back of this phone as well. I like the clean lines. I actually think it looks good. Um, we'll talk about that Hasselblad name and the cameras more a bit later though. As far as the screen is concerned, we have a curved screen, but it is much less curved than normal. And also OnePlus has put in a lot of software to block touches along the edges because even you guys have said in uh, previous videos of mine that you hate curved screens because you always accidentally touch things. And so at least OnePlus is trying to listen. Now, if you get the OnePlus 9, however, it actually has a flat screen. And in their presentation, they kind of were saying that's one of the big differences. If you want a flat screen, go for the 9. If you want a curved screen, go for the 9 Pro. There are some other differences, but they kept mentioning that in the presentation, which I thought was interesting. This one is for all of you who love OnePlus 9 Pro and who don't want to compromise on performance. You prefer flat displays. Well, OnePlus 9 has just that. Best of both worlds. Now that screen is also a 120 hertz adaptive display, so it can go all the way up to 120 hertz or refresh itself 120 times a second when you're doing things like scrolling or playing games, for example, if they support it. But it can also go all the way down to one hertz to save battery life, depending on what's on the screen. We'll see by the end of today how well that works, but you can't actually set it to 120 all the time. It's either adaptive 120 or you can set it down to 60. Those are your only two options. Also that display is capable of QHD plus resolution out of the box. It comes with FHD plus turned on, which is what I'm gonna use it as today because I just wanna use it as how it comes out of the box for this video. But that screen gets up to 1300 nits of peak brightness. And as you can tell, the sun is kind of coming out and I'm able to see my screen just fine. And so that's all I really care about. And lastly, it's IP68 rated, so it can uh, go underwater up to 30 minutes down to a meter and a half.
So the neighborhood we're in is called Red Hook and it's in Brooklyn um, and it's kind of on the end of Brooklyn in a way. It's on this little part of land that sort of juts out into the bay. And this little neighborhood became very popular around like the mid to late 1800s because the Erie Canal was completed and with it a way for ships to go all the way from New York and the rest of the world into the United States and into the Great Lakes and the Midwestern regions. Because of its prime location for ships, it became a huge industrial uh, center here uh, in New York City with about 26,000 ships a year coming during that time. And because of that, we had a lot of people that moved to this neighborhood, whether they were dock workers or actual sailors would stay here whenever they would, you know, wait for their stuff to be offloaded. And it just became this very interesting longshoreman area. And then fast forward to most of the industrial shipping places here on like the Hudson River and the Bay um, in New York. When the industry started to die down, so did the area. In fact, in the 1990s, Life Magazine named this one of the worst neighborhoods in the United States. But that's not the case anymore. And I'll show you as we keep going. Now the name Red Hook is actually pretty interesting too because um, this whole area was New Amsterdam at one point, which was the settlement that the Dutch uh, created when they came over here in like the 1600s. Now, this area was called Rood Hook, I think, but it translates roughly to, you know, red and hook, but to them hook meant a point, not like a hook, and it makes sense. There was red clay here, and it kind of points out into the bay. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for lunch. We're at a place called Hometown Barbecue. And this place was started by a guy named Billy Dirty. He was, in a past life, a bodyguard for celebrities. And after living someone else's life all day long, as he puts it, he kind of wanted to live a little more for himself. And so he started Hometown Barbecue here, where both of his grandparents immigrated to when they came to the United States in Red Hook. Now this place has been written up by like every food magazine ever as some of the most amazing barbecue. So I'm excited to try it. So of course I got the brisket because that's what you always get at a barbecue restaurant. It's usually the best thing on the menu. I got it in a sandwich. This might have been ambitious, but the meat is so good. That's even without the sauce, by the way. Let's try with the sauce. Messy in the best way. So good. Okay, and while we're here, let's talk about the performance of the phone. Now, honestly, this is kind of OnePlus's forte. It always has been. On this phone, we have a Snapdragon 888 processor, and that's paired with that 120 hertz screen, along with eight or 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, which is fast, um, and 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, also very fast. Now, on top of that, we have all these optimizations that OnePlus does in Oxygen OS, um, and it feels snappy. And everything about gaming on the phone, it's gonna handle most of the things just fine, because the specs just kind of dictate that it will. But they actually added a, an interesting feature called Hyper Touch. Now, what that does is it actually increases the touch sampling rate to 360 hertz, or 360 times a second, uh, to further reduce the lag, or the time it takes from you to tap the screen to the action in the game happening. That's cool, but the downside of this is that it only works in very specific games right now, and the developers of new games will have to add it, and we'll see how many actually end up doing that. Um, but right now, the only games that work are PUBG, Call of Duty, League of Legends, and Brawl Stars. And of course, OnePlus says more coming soon. And something else related to the performance, we also have 5G built in. We have sub six and millimeter wave. So we'll work on say, Verizon's higher speed 5G here as well. Also, speaking of that, we have to talk about today's sponsor, Visible. Now Visible, powered by Verizon, 
5G included, and it's super fast. Only difference is there's no hassle of having to go into any stores. Visible will actually overnight you a SIM card and or a phone, and you can get started using their app once you put the SIM card in. And they also have this thing called Party Pay, which is pretty cool. Basically, once you set up your Visible account, you can invite anyone to join your party. And it could be your family members, but it doesn't have to be. It could be your neighbor, your best friend, your um, internet friends. For everyone that joins, the entire party will get $5 off their monthly payment. And after the fourth member joins, that means all of your bills are $25 a month. And you can have a limited number of people in your party. And something I was really interested in was, how does that work with everyone's bill? Well, they're all separate. Everyone manages their own account and their own bill. You don't have to share anything other than the savings. My visible SIM is what is in this phone right now. And I have to say, I've been getting 5G everywhere here in Red Hook. If you wanna learn more about Visible, please click the link in the description below. And thanks again to Visible for sponsoring this video. Now though, let's continue our tour of Red Hook. Okay, and now we're at the Red Hook Winery. So this winery was started in 2008, um, and it's been in this current location here in Red Hook in, since 2012. Now it is a winery, so they don't actually own any of the grapes. The grapes come from various vineyards over on the North Fork of Long Island and some in the Finger Lakes region, um, but everything is then from grape to bottle done here in this place on the pier here in Red Hook. And I was talking to a gentleman here because this whole area, Red Hook, was devastated by Hurricane Sandy back in 2012. It happened to have hit this area right after they moved into this building. Again, here on the pier, as in on the water. The water came all the way up, straight up into the building, and you can actually see where this white wall is. That's how high the water got. So a huge amount of their inventory was killed. Anything that was on the ground ended up floating around in salt water. But according to these guys, after the hurricane, that next year, they managed to actually get all the way back to their normal production. And he says that it's in big part to the people of this neighborhood. But while we're here, let's talk about the cameras on this phone. First, let's talk about why this has two large cameras on the back. Basically, they did something similar to what Oppo did with the Find X3 Pro. They put two flagship sensors in the back. The first one we have is the ultra wide camera and it is a 50 megapixel binned to 12.5 megapixels IMX 766 sensor with an interesting freeform lens that helps correct the edge distortion associated with ultra wide lenses instead of using software like normal. The lens also automatically turns on whenever you get close to something and it uses it as a macro camera. Then the other sensor is a 48 megapixel binned to 12 megapixel IMX 789 slightly larger sensor. It's 0.699 inches compared to 0.64 inches. And as I've said before, I like this concept. I like the idea of having two flagship sensors. It means that when you switch between the ultra wide and the wide in this case, the color science is gonna be much more similar. It's also just better quality. They're larger sensors. Instead of having your main camera sensor and then whenever you switch to ultra wide or telephoto, you end up kind of sacrificing a little bit. Now, would I love to see them do this on the telephoto as well? Absolutely. Maybe we'll get to that point. I'm assuming it's a cost thing, um, but for now, at least we're heading in that direction. Now, speaking of the telephoto sensor, we have an eight megapixel, 3.3 times optical zoom telephoto lens. And lastly, for the camera sensors on the back of this, we have a sensor that I always hate, which is a monochrome sensor. It just sees in black and white, and it supposedly is meant to capture more detail and gets you know, used with the main sensor to make things look nicer. Also, you can, you know, do black and white photos using just that sensor. But the truth is for me, I feel like it's an excuse just to put another camera on the back and say, we have four, not three, when really you can do most of those things with software nowadays. So I don't know. Anyone who has noticed the branding on this camera might be wondering what Hasselblad has to do with it. Well, Hasselblad, if you're not familiar, 
is a very old, popular camera company. In the marketing material for OnePlus, they kept showing a moon when they were teasing everything. And that's because Hasselblad is the manufacturer of the camera that ended up going to the moon with Buzz Aldrin and took like the photo of the boot print in the ground, of the flag, all of that fun stuff. It was actually left on the moon after that to save weight for the re-entry. But it's a camera company with a pretty big legacy. Now, what does it actually do on this phone? Well, not much. I would love to see them do something with hardware. We have yet to see that on any of these kind of camera company co-branding things with all these phones that are happening. But what they did was they actually just helped with the color science. Now, does it look nice? Yes, I think it does. So kind of nice that Hasselblad did that. I appreciate it. But I can't help but feel like all of these camera companies on the phones are essentially more marketing things than they are anything else. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. And now for video, we can shoot in 8K up to 30 frames per second, and we have 4K up to 120 frames per second. Now, the thing I like about this is that it doesn't have auto slow-mo. A lot of times when you shoot in 4K on these phones and you do it at 120 frames a second, it automatically slows it down to 30. So you get a four times slow motion, but you can't change that. It automatically comes out as a slow motion video. This actually stays in 120 frames a second. So then you, when you're editing, can decide whether you want to slow parts down, speed them up, etc., etc. It's the way I shoot actually uh, a lot of times with this camera when you see the slow-mo shots in this. A lot of those are shot in 4K 120 and then I decide after if I want them to be slow-mo or not. And I like that flexibility. I think it's cool that OnePlus put that in here. Well, lastly, something I thought that was interesting about the video is they have nightscape video or night mode for their video. And it's supposed to brighten up the dark areas while shooting a video in the same way that night mode works on your photos. But we'll test that in a bit after the sun goes down. Okay, for one of our last stops here, we are now at Hoke Pizza, named for all the things I just told you. Rude Hoke. I think that was right. If anyone speaks Dutch, let me know. Apparently they make Roman style pizza here. One of the owners uh, is from Rome and his wife is American and they're partners in this. And they actually live a few blocks down the street. But Roman pizza apparently is like a very thin, chewy crust and the toppings extend all the way to the end and it's got like a kind of a charred crust on the outside. Excited to try it out. That's some good pizza. All right, and while we're here, let's talk about the charging on this phone, because it's actually pretty clever. The phone supports Warp Charge 65T, and using that, it can get from zero to 100% in just 29 minutes. And that's filling the entire 4,500 milliamp battery that's in here, and it's actually kind of clever. Um, they actually took this out of Oppo's book, but they use two different battery cells. That way, when they fill the battery, they can fill both at the same time, so they're charging twice as fast than a normal one-celled battery would. Clever. Something else that's pretty clever, this phone supports Warp Charge 50 wireless, which is crazy. You may have to buy a separate wireless stand, but when you do, you can put your phone on it and wirelessly you'll charge at about 50 watts. That gets it from zero to 100 in about 43 minutes. I love that. I love the convenience of wireless charging. I use them all the time. The only downside to it is obviously that it charges slower. So to be able to have faster speeds than most wired chargers out there and still have the convenience of wireless charging, that's amazing. And when you do buy that wireless charging pad, it doesn't come with a brick. But they put the charger in the box for the phone. Not only did they do that, which most companies are not doing nowadays, they also put the 65 watt charger in the box. So the fastest charging ability that this phone has, you get when you buy it. What a concept.
Hi. Good for David, yeah? Yep. Anywhere here is good, man. Thank you. Okay, calling it a night, kind of because we have to. It is 9.14 p.m. and we are at 4%. And here is my screen on time and my usage for anyone who's curious about all of that. And here is another day. That was a bit more of like a normal, typical day and not a real world test day. Now, overall, I would say the battery life, meh, it's meh. A lot of the other phones that I've tested have obviously lasted a lot longer than that. So that's a little disappointing, but you know, obviously it, use your own day compared to the day I just had um, to kind of decide if it's gonna be enough for you or not. Now, overall, I like the phone. I think it's pretty stylish. I It's very snappy. As I said, OnePlus is always very good at that. The issue I have right now though, is that, well, back in the day, they were a lot cheaper than your average flagship. Now though, this phone is very close in price to a top iPhone or a top S21 Ultra for example. And so that gap being much smaller makes it a little harder for me to say, use this phone over just spending a little more and getting one of those. But no, you guys let me know in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Um, I will leave a link below to the best price that I could find on this device. Also uh, links to all the places that I visited because you guys have asked for that before. So I'll put those in there as well for anyone who's curious. And lastly, let me know what you guys thought of this video, the format just kind of running with this and I'm, I'm enjoying making them, but let me know what you guys think watching them. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.